We are back with some more Panthers franchise, and we are into the Super Bowl week. It is the Seahawks taking on the Colts, probably the favorites on both sides to make the Super Bowl, and that is what happened. Both of them made the Super Bowl. It hasn't been played yet. We'll go over the Super Bowl when we get into our final re-sign stage, but this video is just going to be talking about the rest of the playoffs leading up to the Super Bowl and, you know, the awards, the stats, getting into how our team did on the season and all that fun stuff. Before I forget, we did have two people that made the Pro Bowl. We had um, outside linebacker Brian Burns. He was the first starting outside linebacker on the Pro Bowl roster, which is things you love to see. And then we had strong safety Jamie Robinson. He was the second strong safety that made the Pro Bowl team. So um, Jamie is surprised. I, I, I had a feeling Brian's had a good year. I thought maybe he'd make it, but Jamie making it was great. Um, that's what you love to see out of a rookie there making that impact. And let's take a look at the playoff bracket. How did they get here? The Seahawks took on the Saints and won 38 to 24. Um, the, I don't think I updated, I updated you guys on this side, but the Colts beat the Bills 45-35. The Steelers beat the Chiefs 36-32, and the Colts took down the Steelers 42 to 21. So it's the one seed versus the one seed. Um, God, we were so close this week, and um, hopefully that can tie over to next season because. Our offense was very, very good that game. We ran the ball really well. We didn't make any turnovers besides at the very end where we had that bad pick. But that's just, I was just trying to force something late. Um, we started to get things going. So hopefully that can pan out in the next season and we can really, you know, make make a good good stride. Because 10 and 7 is not that good. I, I really would say our regular season as a whole was probably like a 6 out of 10. Playoffs, I put it at an eight out of ten. We had a we beat the two seed pretty handily, um, and then took the one seed all the way to the very very last second with chan multiple chances to win that game. So, playoff wise, I think both of our playoff games were great, especially with how, where our team's at. The regular season was not good. We got to be better, and uh, yeah, pretty much it. So let's start off with the yearly awards. We're just gonna breeze through the leaders here. The MVP was Geno Smith. Coach of the year, Doug Peterson as the Jags coach. AFC side offensive player of the year was Ezekiel Elliott, which is just insane. Um, defensive player of the year is Chris Jones. Offensive rookie of the year, Taj Tajay Spears. Defensive rookie of the year, um, Yasir Abdullah, I think that's how you say his name. Josh Allen, best QB. Zeke, the best running back. Tyquan Thornton, the best receiver. Also kind of crazy. Joel Bet Betanio, whatever you say his name. Best offensive lineman. Chris Jones, best defensive lineman. Josh Uche, best linebacker. Kevin Byer, best DB. And Mr. Caleb is the best kicker. Moving to the NFC side, we got DK as offensive player of the year. I don't believe any Panthers were even close to that. Defensive player of the year, we had Kenny Clark. Um, we had Brian Burns at 8, so nice to see him making the top 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Jordan Addison. No chance a Panther was close. Mingo was 10. Wow, okay. I guess we'll take that. Jack Campbell, Defense Rookie of the Year. Jamie Robinson was at 5. Not too bad. Best QB, Geno. Best Running Back, Roshan Johnson. Best Receiver, DK Metcalf. Best Offensive Lineman, Mr. Chris. Um, best Defensive Lineman, Kenny Clark. Best linebacker, you already know what it is. Brian Burns, made the, he made the Pro Bowl. I mean, come on. Man was out there beasting. That's what you like to see out of Brian. Hopefully, he can keep that up next season. Best DB, Cameron Sutton, I don't believe. Oh, you know, Jamie was there. Yeah, duh. Jamie at six. Best kicker, Jason Myers. So that is that for the yearly awards. Nice to see some people making the Pro Bowl. Before we go into some stats, we have some pretty big news on the defensive side. Offensively, no dev upgrades, unfortunately. To be expected, though. Defensively, two X-Factors. We finally have X-Factors on this team. Now, I only can equip one. Don't ask me why. It did this last Madden 2. I have no idea how to fix it. If anyone knows how to fix it, please tell me. Maybe it shows up as both of them in-game. It won't, like right now, it won't even let me switch it to Jamie Robinson. Right now, I only have it on Brian Burns, and I can't even put Jamie Robinson on it. Um, which is just stupid, but maybe it will show up in game. I have no idea. I don't know why it does that. Jamie got universal coverage, the most physical coverage. Defenders prevent catches from happening when their target has ends on the ball. When they enter the zone, they are nearly guaranteed knockouts. I do like that ability. Um, Brian Burns' X Factor is terrible. It's absolutely terrible. And it's to a point where um, we get tokens in the league. They're like fake currency that we can use to upgrade players and certain attributes and stuff. 
And I have a ton of them because you get those by making content for the league. Obviously, I stream my games and post YouTube videos. So I will most likely be re-rolling this X-Factor ability because it's terrible. It's selfless. So he makes everyone else in the stone, which is not what we want. I want some spectacular. So I'm most likely using tokens. Matter of fact, when I'm done recording this video, I might even submit it right away because I can't have that be my, my X-Factor ability. We gotta get something a little bit more useful there. Um, so that's that. At least we have an X Factor now. We didn't have one all, all season long, so it's nice to have one. And um, before we look at our team stats, we're just going to breeze through league leaders and all the categories, and then we'll you know break down our team and how we did. So we'll start off with passing yards leader, Kenny Pickett, 5,160. The touchdown leader was Geno Smith with 48. The pick leader was a tie between Desmond Ritter and Baker. Desmond threw 40 picks and won 12 games. So that's pretty crazy there. And, you know, was the third seed, I think, in the playoffs. So pretty, pretty good. That's just, just pretty crazy there. Roshan Johnson at 1,800 yards on 300 attempts. I mean, the man was just pounding it away. Um, DK obviously led in yards, 1,800. Reception leader, JSN, 101. I mean, those two are just insane. 23 touchdowns for DK is also insane. Um, most sacks allowed, Mr. Quinn with 14 sacks. That is not what you want to see there. Our solo tackle leader is Jack Campbell. Also, oh, I'm right, Troy Anderson tied with Roquan Smith for the assisted tackle, but total tackles is Jack Campbell with 176. The tackle for loss leader is 56 with Jonathan Allen. Our sack leader is a two-way tie between Chris Jones and Deron Payne. The interception leader is a, what is this, a six-way tie? Kevin Byard, Quandre, Darius Sled, Jesse Bates, Cameron Sutton, and Micah Hyde. Dang. Force fumble leader, we got a bunch of four down here. How many touchdowns we got? We got any safeties? A couple safeties out there. Oh, yeah, Brian, things you love to see. Jaquan Brisker, um, probably a shitload of touchdowns. Oh, yeah, all over the place. Kicking. Um, Matt Gay was banging everything, missed one extra point, one field goal. That man does not make mistakes. Um, punting is, you know, it's, it's punting. <laughs> kick returns, look at all these, dude. So many kick returns, and we were useless on kick returns. We were completely useless. Um, punt returns, there was quite a bit. Two from Jamal Agnew, one from Turpin, one from Byron Pringle. Don't I this this punt return does it, it shouldn't even count. I think I broke like three tackles. It was kind of crazy, but um, Demir Bird did do that for us, which was uh, something there. But that is that for the league leaders, and we're gonna break down our team and then probably wrap up the video there. After we oops, I just completely scrolled by the Panthers. Um, like I said, we had an okay season. Regular season was not really what I have hoped, but the playoffs, we ended strong. So I'm just really hoping that can, you know, the way we played in the playoffs, if we can just carry that over to next season, add some pieces, I think we could still be in a really, really good spot. Um, Bryce Young's rookie year was very, very hot and cold. 3,254 passing yards, not that much. Very, very low. Um, 65% completion is, you know, it's okay. It's not nothing bad. This is where it was bad. 26 picks, not good. Only 19 passing touchdowns. Negative seven, man. I mean, seven more picks more than turnover or touchdowns is not going to get it done. It's really not going to get it done. We got to be better there. Uh, the, you know, the yards per game were just, it's just, the passing just wasn't there. It was too hot and cold. There was games where we were doing very good, and there was games we were doing absolutely terrible. We, Like I said, we got better as the season went on, especially late in the season we got better. Um, but it just was not the rookie season we needed. So hopefully I can get him some more weapons. That's kind of the plan. I'm going to try really hard this offseason to just acquire offensive talent. I think our defense obviously needs some work. Defensive line needs some help. I'm most likely letting Frankie Louvu walk because he wants a bunch of money and he didn't even play that much. He was hurt all the time. And when he did play, he didn't really do much for me. So I'm not going to pay him. I already had to pay massive money for Brian Burns. And, you know, the corners are good. The safeties are good for us. Our linebackers are all right. Mainly the defensive line is where we got to add some people. We got Derek Brown, but that's about it. Um, offense needs help in a lot of spots. So I think I'm going to mainly try to focus on the offense in the offseason. Obviously, we'll see what comes our way. You know, for kind of free agents are there and stuff. But not the best rookie year. As far as running backs, Miles Sanders 
he had an okay year. It wasn't bad. It wasn't like amazing. It wasn't bad. It was just kind of middle of the pack. 249 attempts, 1,200 yards, and six touchdowns. Uh, I think he, I think he did pretty good. He's obviously going to be our starting running back for seasons to come because of the contract they gave him. I really had no option unless I decide to trade him, but I don't think I'll be able to do that. So he's kind of here. I mean, he's still good overall. He's at 91th the morale boost. He's got he's got good stats. He 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 makes plays. So he's going to stay. He's going to stay. It sucks he got hurt, but you know injuries happen. Chuba. He was insane in the playoffs. He was absolutely insane. And Chuba was a very good back for us. I will not even lie. Chuba was pretty, pretty solid for us. 119 carries, 595 yards, averaged five a carry. Also got six touchdowns and zero fumbles. I mean, Chuba had a great year. I believe his contract's up at the end of next season. So we'll see how he plays next year. But he had a great year. Not only on the ground, but receiving as well. I mean, the man made tons of plays out of the backfield for us as a, as a receiving back. Bryce Young, this, the fumbles is clear. Seven. Too much. It's too much. You add down to the picks, man. It's not good. It's too many turnovers. And it's got to be better. Like I said, it got better towards the end, but it's still too much. <coughs> Excuse me. It is still just... Just way too much. A um, couple rushes, some, some end arounds, and some RPOs that turned into rushes. Not much, you know, going on. Blackshear fumbled twice? I don't really remember him fumbling twice, but uh, okay. I guess he's fumbled twice. I don't remember that. As far as the backs, though, we did good. I mean, I had nothing, like, insane, but they were solid. very, very solid. Bryce just got to stop fumbling. The receiving one, um, it's, it's Mingo. It's kind of DJ Chark's numbers actually surprised me. I won't lie. He had about 30 catches less than Mingo and only 100 yards less. So, kind of interesting there. No 1,000 yard receiver. Mingo did not have the explosive, massive rookie year that I would hoped, but it also wasn't bad. It, he, maybe he's our guy going forward after another season. Maybe we can develop him, but he still needs work. He drops some passes. He kind of disappears, like the Seahawks game. He disappeared. He, he didn't even catch a pass. I don't even know if I threw him the ball in the Seahawks game. So he just kind of tends to disappear. That has big games. So I, we got to add to the receiving group, clearly, because we need some help over here. But Mingo had an okay rookie year, 64, 807, and 7. That's okay. DJ Chark was just our big explosive guy. Like I said, the receptions were not there, but big play, 706 yards and two touchdowns. Hayden Hurst was okay, 38 for 564 and six. Um, Thielen, about what I thought, just an old vet, just an old guy, 36 for 472 and one. I would love to get rid of him. I wonder what his, I'm curious to see what his contract situation is in the offseason, if I can cut him. I know of two years left, so I don't know what the cap hit will be. If I'm even gonna save money cutting him or not, we'll have to see what that looks like. I'm, I'm ready to get past these these old guys like Hayden. Oh, he's okay, but I just they're just old, man. I'm trying. I gotta get younger. Hayden's actually not. What is he? 29 or something? 30? You know he can hang around. Thielen, what are you? How old is this man? 33. He seems like he's 37, man. He's he's just old. He's just old. Miles and Chuba very similar stats receiving. 37 catches for Miles. 36 for Chuba, 388 for Miles, 347 for Chuba, and three receiving touchdowns with two for Chuba. Both were very, very quality out of the backfield. Ian Thomas, he was just there from time to time making some plays. LaVisca, same thing, just making a play here or there. A couple catches down here for these guys, but just nothing really to be that excited about. Mingo had an okay rookie year, and that's about it. Nothing too crazy. Um, sacks, nice to see our... Oh, wait, that's not our left tackle. What am I talking about? Um, Moten, 10 sacks allowed. That's piss poor. Our center wasn't that good. Um, you know, <laughs> it'd be what it'd be. It'd be what it'd be. Shaq Thompson was everywhere. 157 tackles. The man was flying around making plays left and right massive season for him he did great eight tackles for loss five picks i mean i think he even had a touchdown as well this dude's the leader up the linebacker core and he's a monster he's here i mean how, how old is Shaq? he's like 28 or something right 29 he's getting up there in age but he, he did so good such a good season from Shaq. zero sacks but he doesn't blitz that much he's always in coverage but um great season from him jeremy chen was okay i mean he, he kind of disappeared here or there but um the stats actually a little bit better than I would have thought. 
to be honest. I really didn't think he had five picks, but I guess he had five picks. It must have been towards the earlier part of the season because I don't think he did much towards the end. Jamie Robinson definitely outshined him towards the end of the season, but not a bad season for Mr. Jeremy. Jamie, though, the rookie, I'm so glad we decided to start him. I mean, he's an X-Factor. He got to an X. He went from normal to X-Factor in one season. The man's a beast. His acceleration's crazy. Good hit power. He's only going to get better. And he's 22, man. He's 22. He's so young. So young. Monster season for him. Seven tackles for a loss. Seven picks. I believe he also... How many touchdowns did he have? Just one? Yeah, one touchdown. The man was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, our corners... Dante Jackson, two picks, you know, okay, 80 tackles. Same thing with JC. He had, he had a little bit more picks, five, but um, looking for a little bit more lockdown next season. You know, the, the, those two come in spurts where it's like, it's like a, game, a couple games of them getting cooked and then a couple games of them locking people down. So hopefully it can be a little bit more consistent heading forward. Uh, you know, that's that's just the hopes and dreams. Um, who was our tackle? It's got to be Brian, right? Yeah, 27 tackles for loss for Brian Burns. 10 sacks. Pick six. Or no, did he have a pick six? Yeah, it was a pick six. Brian Burns was a beast. I mean, 10 sacks, 27 tackles for loss, and a pick six. You got to love it. And he forced four fumbles. He was everywhere. He's a beast. He got the X factor. Man's a monster. Derek Brown, um, six and a half sacks. Not too bad. 15 tackles for a loss. Also on a forced fumble. Solid season for Derek Brown as well. Brandon Smith, the young guy we were trying to develop, he was okay. Nine tackles for loss, half a sack, and two picks. Also with a forced fumble. Spoiler alert, I traded him. I'm not going to talk about the trade until we can really, you know, get into the offseason and talk about stuff. It is, I traded him in a one-for-one -one swap for a player. That's all I'm going to say. Um... Just, <laughs> he's gone. He's gone. And uh, I can't really trade draft capital because I don't have much. So I, we had to go with players, and Brent Smith will be gone. So this was his one season he got with us. He's a young player. He'll be shipped to um, the AFC. I'll just keep throwing out hints. He's shipped to the AFC for a player. And we'll talk about that later. But I already made one deal for the offseason. Um, like I said, trying to make the offense better. So, so oops. Sometimes you got to take some hits, you know, sometimes you got to take some hits. And I think linebacker is especially my second one. Obviously Shaq's the starter, but as a second linebacker, I think we're still in a decent spot where I can maybe even draft a middle linebacker late sixth round and just try to develop someone there, pick someone up for agency, you know, and see what we can do with that. Deion Jones, he started for a few games. Eight tackles for a loss, which really is not that bad for him with the half a sack. Nothing too crazy for Dion there. Um, he, his contract comes up. I'm not sure if I'll resign him or not. We'll see what he's asking for and stuff. Um, Akeem Hicks was a free agent signing. I think he actually, for just a quick rental, I think he was pretty freaking good. He's obviously not going to get resigned. He's way too old, but I was just trying to get some depth there on my defensive line. And seven tackles for loss with three sacks is, I will, I will take that. Same thing with Henry Anderson, kind of a guy I didn't really expect anything from, and he got seven tackles for loss and three sacks. So another guy that just was getting things done. Speaking of people not getting things done is Frankie. I mean, this is why I'm not re-signing him. I just, he got hurt. How many games did he play? Does it show here at the end? Played 13, so he only missed four games. I felt like he missed more than four. So it's not good. It's not good. One sack. No forced fumbles, no interceptions, only four tackles for loss. This is why he's going. I had, you know, hopes and dreams that Frankie could stay. He's still pretty young, 26. He's a good player. <coughs> we'll have to see what the um, re-sign interest is. That would be the big tell for him. Because last time I checked, his re-sign interest was terrible. He did not want to stay here. So I'm not going to give him a super overpaid contract for him to stay with that type of production. He's a good player. But uh, I just might have to let him go. We'll have to see what his re-sign interest is when we get to our final re-sign stage. Um, I believe that's pretty much any everyone I wanted to talk about on the defensive side. No one, yeah, nothing else. Um, a lot of positives on the defense. Not much is not much on the offense. Eddie was okay. Missed five kicks. Also uh, missed two extra points. But uh, we banked quite a bit from distance. What we do? Eight from fifty or more. I mean, come on, that's pretty solid. 
I'll gladly take that. I will gladly take that. Johnny, um, you know, punter, punters are punters. Kick returns were terrible. Our longest was a 38. It was not good. We, we were non-existent on kick returns. Punt returns were also non-existent. We got juiced by the 160-yard touchdown, which that was just so random. I mean, that was nothing consistent. So we got to be better on special teams. And that is that for our stats. That is that. Look at that. 31st. 31st. We, we might as well be last in offense. The offense, like I said, it's what we got to focus on in the offseason. And it's why I traded Brandon Smith to acquire just some help on the offense. And it will not be the only acquisition we made. We will be hopefully getting some people in the offseason and trying to give Bryce Young the weapons he needs. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.